Hello, welcome back to uh, another section for continuing the design of column. This time we have a column we want to design and it's about 16 feet long and it's pinned on both ends. And the dead load is 115 kip and the life load is 125 kip. So we want to find a, a select a column that it can support this load. One of the first thing we're going to do is look at the uh, effective length. And if you look at the chart right here, because of this pin both way, your K is going to come out to equal one. So that kind of help us out a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is um, go ahead and calculate the load. We can calculate the load based on uh, AC 7 and we're going to say the load is equal all right we have um, 1.2 time dead load plus 1.6 time life load and that will comes out to 1.2 time 115 plus 1.6 time 125 and I got uh, 338 uh, kips. Okay. Let's double check that number. Okay. So 338 kips. Now we know our load. The design procedure that you want to follow, take a look at what I have on the screen. You really want to follow these seven steps. And um, step one is calculating the service load, which we did. Then step two, find a critical stress based on assumed KL over RY, uh, the cylinder ratio. Now, to calculate that, to us uh, to to find the assumption for that, normally, if you look at the AAC book, the maximum you can go is 200. And if you remember the chart we did last uh, on the last previous uh, lecture, you want to stay below uh, 113. It's a good, good, good idea. That way you're in, a, in an elastic range. And a lot of designers, based on their experience, uh, they usually pick anywhere from uh, between 40 and 80. So just we can pick a number between 4 and 80 would be good based on our length. Let's pick 75, okay? Say, okay, if we say our KL, assuming KL over R equals 75, all right? That's just the assume. So once we do that, and then let's go back, look at the design procedure that we're going to follow the steps. So when we have that, that's a step two. Step three, we're going to go ahead and calculate the gross cross-sectional area. And if we use table 414, uh, we can use table 414 wrong section. Takes time to find these things in the table. Once we have table 414, uh, we can go ahead and select the, uh, the critical stress. Or in the table 414, if you look at it, I got it on screen, and we can find uh, the fee time FCR comes out to uh, 29.8. Okay, so we have phi time F critical stress that comes out to 29.8 KSI. So now we have that, and once we have that, we can go ahead and calculate the uh, gross cross-sectional area, 
and how we do it again take a look at the screen again these steps are important so our AG comes out to PU divided by phi time critical stress and what we have here is uh, Our PU came out to three, 338 and divide that by 29.8 and that gave me the area of 11.34, okay, square inch. So now you have that and uh, taking that area, we go back to this book again, to a table, uh, take a look at your, uh, on the screen again. We, once we have that, we're gonna go to ooh, table 41A. And table 41A, you go down the bottom and you find the area that you're looking for. You pick a, a member, like pick a, any W shape that you like, and then you go ahead, let's, let's focus on like W12. We go on W12 and we found an area closer to 11. So if we go ahead and take the area, say, let's take the area 14.6. Or if we take 14.6, that's a W12 by 50. So okay, we're gonna select, uh, based on area, we're gonna select uh, W12 by 50. Now you gotta remember, when you go ahead, let's back up and go over this again. This is getting complicated. Once you have the load, you figure out the, your, your load based on AAC7. So we got our combined load 338 cubes. Now I have that. Once I have that, I gotta assume the cylinder ratio. And the cylinder ratio, you wanna assume any between 40 and 80 is a good number based on the length of that. So let's assume any number you can assume. 75, we said. So now we have 75. We go back to the table 414. And from that table, we can use. Uh, this KL ratio of 75 and find a cross-sectional area. So now once we have KL ratio from table of 422, we can calculate uh, the uh, critical stress and or phi time. Um, so let's make that, this, this was step one. And step two was, uh, we guessed at this, okay. And step three was, uh, based on that, we found this. This is step three. So this is step three, continue. Okay, so from step three, we go ahead and we continue. We found W, we selected the 12 by 50. You can select any grade you want as long as you're close to the cross-sectional area. Now from here, we're gonna go back uh, backward, analyze it, see if what we select, is it gonna work or not. So let's continue to step four. We're gonna check for local buckling because now already you have 12 by 50. So now you have 12 by 50. You, um, if we, again, we have, uh, when we look at 12 by 50, let's find out the real KLY. So our K, L, R, Y, and we know it's 16 feet, so the factor was one, 16 feet, the K was one, and let's convert that to 12 by 12, to make it an inch, and divide by R, Y. Where can I find R, Y? I already have selected 12 by 50, and if I go to table, the first table that we talked about last time, it's the uh, W shape properties. From W shape properties, we can find all the information we want about 12 by 50. And what I have found is, okay, so let's make a, 
spot here. Okay, and we found from all those shaves, the area is uh, 14.6, and the B is 808. We need all this stuff. And then we have TW is uh, 0 0.370. Um, T, which is the same as my age, that it's going to be 9 and a quarter, 9.25. And Rx and Ry, I need those two. Rx is equal 518, and Ry is equal buck 96. All right. So 196 is the Ry. Now we know if we want to find that, that become divided by 1.96 here. And my KL over ratio, it's going to come out to 97.96, which almost is 98. Okay. So. So now we know that's 98. Okay, so we have that. We got K, we have that information which we're gonna use. So that that's all was part of step number three. Now we're gonna go to step number four. We're gonna check for local buckling. To check for local buckling, you're gonna go to table 4A. Table 4A, it's on the screen, take a look at it. Table 4A. And from there, we can find out our uh, B over T ratio, which comes out to, uh, we said B was 808. Be careful, you got it 808. It's all the way to one half of it. So divide that by two, and then divide the whole thing by uh, the um, T. The T we're going to use is not T, T the flange, which is, I didn't put down here. Uh, it's... Uh, Okay, T flange is, I think, 0.6. Yeah, 0.64. So we're going to divide by 0.64, and that ratio comes out to 6.3. And we wanted that ratio to be less than R, lambda R, which we can say lambda R is uh, uh, 0.56. Square root of uh, 29,000 KSI divided by 50 KSI and comes out to 13.4, and that checks out. Time to use another marker. So now you have that. Remember, again, we dealing with this shape here, I beam. So we check the flange. That checked out fine. Now I go, gotta go check the web here, and the web says, I'm taking it, look at the table again. You have to look at H, T web, which comes out to H hour, comes out to nine and a quarter, and divide that by 0.37, comes out to 25, and has to be less than, has to be less than, uh, look at the table. When you look at the table for 4A, B for 1A, check for local buckling. Because your shape has two plates, you got one plate on top, one plate in the middle, with a flange and a web. So we already checked for the flange, which was row one. To check for the web, you go to the row five, and it shows right in the picture, and that's where we get the formula, which is 1.49, has to be less than 1.49, uh, 29,000 divided by 50, square root of 29,000 KSI divided by 50. And I believe that comes out to 35.8. So yeah, that's checked out. We don't have any local buckling issue. You shouldn't because the member you picked is in a steel book. Normally they work out so you will not have a, uh, uh, you will not have this issue. So that was step number uh, four. So, okay, let's, this, this was, came out to step number four right here. Good. Now, let's take a look at the screen again. We're going to go to step number five. And we know that uh, in step number five, KL over RY control, because RY is smaller than RX, so we know that, uh, that, we, that controls. 
and then uh, that's for the selection we uh, for the section we selected. Then we go back to table four fourteen. Okay, step number five. Okay, we're gonna go table four fourteen. From table four fourteen, we can find it's on the screen. Phi F protocol comes out to. 22.3 okay and our f critical if you divide that by 9.9 so f critical comes out to 22.3 divided by 0.9 and that comes out to 24.8 so we have that anyway so now once we have that um, we can calculate the uh, the load and to calculate the load, um, we can calculate the load, and a formula for the load was phi p n that's equal to phi time critical stress time a g. Okay, so we have phi critical stress. We already figured out it is 22.3. So we says, okay, 22.3 times the area. And we set the area for that. It came out to 14.6. All right, and that comes out to 326 kips. Okay, now you gotta pay attention here. We got 320 kips. So that was step number five and six. We calculate that. And so that make it five and six right here. Okay, I don't like that color. Five and six. Um, and we calculated, came out to 326. But our load came out to 338. So now let's go back to step seven to check see if we did it right and step seven says all right uh, let's go to green step seven says 326 is less than what we calculated which was 338 okay so that's no good and what do you do go pick the next one the next one is two on a book is 12 by we took we took 12 by 50 so the next one we're going to take 12 by 53 and this is a really a trial and error you try a bunch of stuff like that and once you find a bunch of stuff like that you can make a spread excel sheet and make it easier and write a bunch of formula down and, and put the numbers in and you can bang them out there are program you can do this no problem but we want to learn how this is done so you got to follow these seven steps to get to here. And once you get here, you try it again, you try it again, and then you have a list of uh, a W shape for yourself, and you pick the one you want. And depending on what you're doing, if you're doing a temporary structure, then you want to pick something that's a little bit stronger. If the, if, if the weight is the issue and you want to stay close to the lightest section, then you pick something like that. Take a look at what I did on an Excel spreadsheet, and I picked a bunch of those, and that's what I got.